This tutorial is my workflow for creating detailed low poly characters. This content is an adapted extract from my comprehensive pathway course, a huge 30 hour resource built for complete beginners. It covers everything you need to create and even sell low poly asset packs, which of course you could use in your games. This lesson was specifically made to help students achieve that next level of refinement. So it's always great to start with some sort of base mesh if you have one. If you struggle to get to this starting point, then it might be worth taking the pathway as you'll find it very easy after that. It's a very simple shape, but it has the outline or silhouette of the character I want, short legs and a bulky upper body. The first stage is adding detail very selectively. It's important not to just add loads of vertices everywhere. Instead, focus on areas that need more form. For example, here I'm not creating separate fingers, but I am separating the thumb out slightly, giving it a little bit extra topology so I can easily rig it. So that loop cut around the middle will help it bend. And I'm aiming for a bare minimum of detail required to achieve this. I've also added extra details around the shoulders to give more bulk and a more muscular form. And doing the same around the chest, adding an extra loop cut or using the knife tool at times to refine the silhouette. So I'm basically drawing the muscular structure with things like loop cuts and the knife tool, just indenting things in order to create the right shape. It's really important to have lots of reference images during this stage, especially for anatomy, particularly if you're not that confident, but even if you are, references are invaluable. I've got lots open on a second monitor. Sometimes I'll add a really large loop cut all the way around the body. That's to help make things like the legs more circular. I do the same with the arm later on, but be really cautious adding large loop cuts like that. They add a lot of topology. Try and keep things as simple as possible. The denser the mesh becomes, the harder it is to edit. Next, we move on to adding some clothing. Now I'm modifying the existing boots on this character, but you might want to finalize your base mesh before adding clothing, especially if you plan lots of iterations, you might want lots of wolf characters with different features for a game with different levels of enemy. In that case, it's worth making sure you have the base mesh in before you add clothing, if the clothing is going to be different for different characters. There's pros and cons to adding clothing early on. And you can always adapt existing clothing or add new elements later, so it's not too bad to add it early. It can be helpful to occasionally add beveled edges just to increase the topology in certain areas, but do be careful of this. It can cause n-gons and weird triangles, which you just have to tidy up a little bit. N-gons can sometimes cause problems when you're animating. When adding the clothing, especially elements like capes or pieces that detach from the main body, it can get tricky. These sticky outy bits can overlap and get in the way you're in rigging, and they can just be really awkward to model because you can't get to certain bits or see them very well. If you're struggling in the modeling stage, then just make sure you hide parts of the mesh to help you out. That can kind of create space. But generally speaking, it's a really good idea to keep clothing relatively skin tight where possible. It massively simplifies the rigging process and reduces any potential problems, basically. A wrist guard, for instance, is simple. It won't distort or overlap. Capes, however, are really difficult to animate and can easily clip through your character. So avoid detached or outwardly protruding elements if you can. It's a good idea as well to try and keep your polygons fairly even across your mesh. So avoid large stretched polygons. And if you find vertices that are really close to each other, then just merge them. That should help simplify things and keep that low poly feel. Now the next stage might seem counterintuitive, but I'm now jumping into sculpt mode. I have the character's silhouette roughly in place and I use this as a base mesh and then I turn on dynamic topology and start sculpting the character, particularly the head because that's a bit more complicated. Sculpting of course adds lots of polygons. I don't go too high with my Dyn Topo settings, but the idea is that I'll decimate this later. So from the high poly, it will go back down to a low poly form. All the previous steps up to this point were about establishing a good base shape and sculpting is kind of the finer details and just adjusting the shape. This particular workflow that I'm using here is kind of personal to me, and it's good if you're comfortable with sculpting and that's your particular style, that sort of artsy style in a sense. If you're not, you can achieve very similar results purely through polygon editing or box modeling, although it can be a little bit slower, I find, and you need to be a bit more precise with that, but that can actually be a good thing. 
Neither method is superior, it's about finding what suits you. I'm combining both because I think the low poly base mesh is nice and quick with the box modeling and then using the sculpt for the refining stage makes it more artistic and it suits me. The next stage then is the decimation phase. This is crucial to give it that low poly look. In order to make sure there's an even distribution of polygons, which looks good with low poly models, it's really often best to remesh the entire body first. That gives you a consistent density across the mesh. Then when you use the decimate modifier, it gives it a nice consistent look. The great thing about having a modifier is that you can change the value to get the low poly style that you want. You could go really low poly or that little bit higher. It depends on the detail and style you're after. After you decimate, you'll probably need to do a bit of tidy up. That means you have to actually apply the modifier. I often cut it in half and add a mirror modifier. You might find areas like the fluffy mane lose their sharpness during the decimation. And that requires some manual adjustment to kind of make it spiky again. A common issue is closely packed vertices, especially along the mirror line where I cut it in half. You'll need to merge them for a clean seam. Also reinforcing rigid lines like belts, you'll need to go in and just make sure that they're sharp and do a bit of clean up there. The main goal here is to ensure that your character's silhouette still looks perfect and the outline is still there. The next step is to assign colors using a color palette. So this is UV unwrapping. You select a group of faces, unwrap them, scale them to zero, and then move them into the correct color on your color palette. This method has its limitations because you're limited by the colors in your color palette. You can also assign different material slots for varied properties like roughness, and you can still use the same color palette. The next step is to rig the character. That's obviously optional depending on the asset pack you're trying to create. I'm using a rig that I previously created within the course, but for more advanced rigging, I would use Blender's Rigify add-on. It's much better in terms of the rigging that you can achieve and therefore the animations you can achieve. It's just a bit tougher to learn, so I didn't add it into the course. Before you parent the armature to your character, make sure you've applied the scale and the rotation for both character and rig before parenting. Once you've parented, check the weights and refine it if you need to paint them at all. If you have a mirror modifier on your character, painting one side will update on the other automatically. So leave the mirror on when you're parenting to the armature. And my aim here was just to achieve a simple and interesting pose. Lastly, there's lighting the character. If you're building these as part of an asset pack, then this is actually essential for showcasing your pieces. For this aggressive wolf character, I chose a dim environment with harsh directional lighting from above to create strong shadows and an intensity. I also added a strong side light for a rim light effect that helps to separate the character from the background. Adding a couple of contrasting backlights, like a blue one on the side and an orange one on the other, which are complementary colors, that can often create a nice dynamic effect. And there it is, the finished character. Hopefully this has given you some insight into the techniques available to you when creating high detailed, low poly characters. Let me know if you have any thoughts or questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.